Step 3. Total internal reflection. In the previous step, we have seen that if light is incident on a surface and traveling from a more dense medium into a less dense medium, then it gets bent away from the normal axis. It gets the angle of refraction, so this angle over here, is larger than the angle of incidence. So we can have the scenario where we are increasing steadily the angle of incidence. And the refracted beam of light is uh, being bent further and further away from the normal uh, axis that's perpendicular to the uh, surface of the material. So we can ask the question, is there such an angle of incidence where the refracted uh, uh, beam travels parallel to the surface, to the interface between the two media? Meaning, we are looking for a scenario where, where the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. And, yes, there is. So, we are looking for this scenario. We have our incident beam hitting the interface between glass and air at such an angle, such that the refracted beam travels at 90 degrees to the normal, or parallel to the surface between air and glass. So, let's now compute this angle using Snell's law. We have that the uh, Ni, the refractive index of glass, times the sine of the angle of incidence is equal to the uh, refractive uh, index of air, Nr, times the sine of uh, theta r. But we know that here we are looking for the scenario where the sine uh, of theta r is just sine of 90 degrees, which is equal to 1. So we have the following relationship. And we have changed the subscript here on this theta to uh, theta c, which stands for critical angle, because that's the critical angle where we obtain angle of refraction of 90 degrees. Now we can just rearrange to get sine of theta c equal to as a simple fraction of nr over ni. In our case here, nr is the refractive index of air, and ni is the refractive index of glass. And we can just take the arc sign to obtain uh, this expression for the critical angle. When this happens, then we have, then we said that the uh, light ray travels parallel to the surface, but we can also keep increasing the angle of incidence to theta i being larger than the critical angle theta c. And in that case, what happens, we get total internal refle reflection. So the light ray comes in and gets totally reflected back to inside the glass. And this is the uh, case that we saw in the first step uh, of uh, Tyndall's experiment where the light was being internally reflected and guided by the stream of water. So let's consider some uh, numerical examples. Here we are keeping the uh, refractive index of uh, um, the outside medium, which for us is air, fixed, so it's just 1.00028. It's basically the same as 1. And what we are changing is the material of, uh, of the fiber. So we are changing the refractive index of uh, uh, an eye. And we are looking at the value of the critical uh, angle beyond which uh, total internal reflection can occur. So if, if we are plotting the arc sign of, uh, 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 of the previous expression for the theta c, then we get the following curve. So we see that as we are increasing the density of the material, we are decreasing the angle of uh, the critical angle beyond which we get total internal reflection. For example, if we look at uh, the interface of water and air, Water have refract has a refractive index of 1.33, so that's this line over here, and we obtain uh, a critical angle of around 50 degrees. Glass is a little bit more dense than water, it has a refractive index of 1.46, and the angle of uh, the critical angle beyond which we get total internal reflection is a little bit smaller than the water. And for diamond, which uh, has a, a very large refractive index of 2.42, then the angle is slightly over 20 degrees. So what does, that, what does all this mean, that the, ang that the critical angle is decreasing? Well, it means that in glass, if we want to obtain total internal reflection, then the angle of incidence 
which again I remind you is the angle between the incident light ray and the normal to the surface has to be large, meaning that the angle between the surface, so the measured with respect to the interface between air and glass, has to be quite small. Then we get total internal reflection, whereas in diamond, the light is confined more strongly. It can, it can have an incident angle which is smaller than it is in the glass. So it, even, if it's, um, even if it's incident on the surface at, uh, at this much steeper angle, it still can get reflected and be contained and guided by the fiber.